Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieve this peacock feather. From the basic underdrawing to the chroma layers and adding that glow. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Just skipping through this outline pretty quickly. I did it freehand, started it off, but I made a mistake, so I rubbed it out. But I, normally what I do is work from a center point and then use imaginary angles and using the pencil on a horizontal or vertical plane to check the alignment. But I've got loads of videos in my channel how to draw the outline freehand. If you want to check those out, please do later. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now the biggest tip I can give you actually is to uh, um, keep the reference image as small as possible so you can see the whole of the image and get, you get the whole feeling of the subject you're painting or drawing. This enables you to actually feel and see everything as a whole because when you, I'm painting I tend to try and keep a wholeness to the whole of the image rather than separate little bits of detail. I try and keep the details as close as I can but it's just my interpretation so I'm not too concerned if it's slightly different. If you keep a similar pattern it, it makes it easier for you though and you don't lose your way. This all helps to keep you relaxed. Here's the basic Carbothello pencils I started with. I always like to put an underdrawing in there first just so you're correcting the outline and I'm just using basic sort of white here just to put uh, more pressure where it's white and less pressure where it's mid-tone. I'm using the grey of the board to shine through so I'm just creating some sort of form by just using the white with a different pressure on it. It just creates a little bit of a glow underneath before you start putting the colour on. It just helps with that vibrancy by adding that white before you add the colour. Now when you're trying to create these glowy colours and especially if you're using the reference image on a computer screen with the light shining through the image and when you're painting and drawing the light's shining on the board so you're not going to get that exact vibrancy so you have to go as close as you can to it but I still prefer to actually draw from a computer screen because you get more subtleties uh, photographs tend to be a little bit sort of dead in the shadows so I do try and get as close as I can with what I see but you, there's a limit so you have to be aware of that uh, and don't get upset that you can't replicate exactly what you see on the computer image. Now I'm using the ultramarine dark and ultramarine light from the Conti A Paris range. They're really nice and chalky, they're quite vibrant as well and they're quite uh, easily blendable as so I do like to use these as a, a starting point. So I'm sort of mixing the white with it and just creating the closest colour than what I can see by just grabbing a few colours what are similar as well in my box, my Carbothella box. Um, now to get that dark shadow I'm using black but I'm adding something to the black because the black on its own is quite dead. So we need to sort of put blue with it and also a bit of red now and again. What I tend to do is just block in with these colours just to get an idea of the actual vibrancy and get the overall colours down first before making a choice of detail. Um, it's just to get an idea because you don't want to be putting loads of uh, detail down straight away and then you find later on that it's not dark enough or the colour of the blue is not quite right and you have to change it up. It's always best to get the colours around it and get, try and create it as a whole. Uh, so get quite a few colours around what you're doing initially and then you can see the details more clearly then. 
Now to create that golden look I'm putting a warm yellow in there and the burnt sienna mixed together. Now to create a darker version of this colour I'm adding this blue which is more of a true blue than the actual ultramarine. An ultramarine blue you can actually mix by adding a bit of red to this colour. So this is more of a truer blue. And burnt sienna as it's an orangey colour it, it works really well for the complementary colour which is blue to create them subtle sort of shadows or variations of that colour. Now to give it a little bit more depth, just add that little bit of brown, because brown and blue makes really nice natural looking blacks. All I'm doing here is just trying to get a balance of the vibrancy before I start putting those lines on, those the details of where each feather is. So it's a case of just keep putting the pigment on, but keeping enough tooth there so when you start putting the details on it's got something to grab onto or so it'll just sort of go muddy. Now for the really zingy areas I'm putting lemon yellow in there and then mixing a bit of that pure blue in there to create a nice vivid green. So I'm putting the yellow down first and then that will give that a zinginess to the greenness when you actually put that blue over the top of it. Now I'm choosing this pink here from, it's like a purpley pink, it's from the Caran Dash range. So you have to choose whatever you've got in your kit which is closest to it really, then you can change it up by adding a little bit of red or a bit of blue. Um, so you've got to start somewhere, so I always pick something closest to it. But these Caran Dash pencils are really rich in vibrancy. I'm mixing it up with a Carbothello colour which is more closer to the actual uh, combination of the two together is, is a closer to that area so you have to mix in different ones to create the colour you're looking for and I'm adding a little bit of lemon yellow as well to create an orangey colour in certain places so you have to keep mixing up but you see putting that lemon yellow on it really gives that vibrancy it sort of gives that zinginess and uh, it seems to do the trick on any colour. If you just add a little bit of lemon yellow to it, it just makes a difference. Here I'm just showing you the difference between putting lemon yellow down on its own, but then using white first and then lemon yellow. But you can see how much it glows. That's why I put the white down first. And the more it glows, I put more of that sort of Caran Dash white because it's more richer in vibrancy than the gl glows more when you when you glaze over the top but if it's not so glowy you could always use like a carbothello white which is not so vibrant and then glaze over top of that so i'm sort of working from two different whites and if you haven't got a carbothello or caran dash faber castell is a really good white it's really crisp and and bright so you could use that if you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now this area is really bright and vibrant, which is very difficult for me to actually achieve what I saw on the computer screen. So I tried using a stick from the Rembrandt, and that didn't work. Sometimes when you put one of these sticks down, it makes it flat, actually, rather than glowing. I always seem to think that using that white first and then glaze over the top seems to do the trick more. So I tended to sort of stick with that idea, um, but I still couldn't get that vibrancy I was looking for. So sometimes you just got to go as close as you can get. You just have to accept that that's just how it is. Because like I said, it's light coming through the image rather than light shining on it. Now I've got some of the colour underneath what I'm looking for. I'm starting to put the lines across now where the feathers um, will go. Now it's very difficult to get the amount of detail that they're in the reference image because these are really close together and you'd have to have your pencil to sort of really very sort of pinpoint all the time and it's really, you can't really do that. So it's your interpretation, it's like an expression of what you see. I always tend to draw what I feel rather than trying to put every little detail the same. So I've gone as close as I can do, but like I say, it's just uh, my impression of it. What I tend to do is find the pattern, find the movement. With this peacock feather, it's an explosion of colour from the centre. It's like an explosion. 
um, because when he's showing off his his colours, that's what he's trying to achieve that explosion of all these bright colours. So that's what I'm trying to feel while I'm doing this is feeling that explosion of colour and power and trying to draw that and express that rather than getting too worried and wrapped up about getting the details exactly the same as reference. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for their wonderful support every month. I can't thank you enough, it means the world to me. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below. Now I found it important that you don't put too much pigment underneath before the details because I won't be able to do these lines like I'm doing now if that was really saturated underneath them with pigment. So you always have to keep that little bit of tooth there for this reason. Once you've got the pattern of the direction right then you can go in between them with sort of brighter colours, fresher colours and you just change it up really just to, to what's needed but you've got that sort of basic sort of structure that you've put in with those lines and then you can you can sort of flow with it and get the sort of subtleties in here I'm putting that lemon yellow to get that zinginess in there so I'm putting that down first and then I'll go over the top of that then with the warm red to create an orange like a zingy orange the lemon yellow is such a wonderful colour to get that zinginess. I always use it for that sort of reason. But if this is, so, this is part here is some of its green. So I'll put the yellow down first to create that sort of vibrancy. Then go over it with blue, rather than trying to pick a, a green that's a very similar colour. You won't get the same sort of feel as what I've just done there. You're putting the lemon yellow down first with with the glaze of blue. It just doesn't create the same sort of atmosphere with it. Now I wasn't quite happy with the orange there so I used an orange with the lemon yellow and, and again it creates that zingy orange um, but yeah you just got to keep playing really but once you've got those lines in then you can go heavier then with the pigment because when it's really bright you have to put a lot of pigment down but you have to prepare, you have to build it up in stages before you can start putting heavy colour on Still adding more light to it, so I'm trying to get that zinginess, so I'm putting that white back in now. And then I'll go over again with colour. Uh, you have to keep going backwards and forwards. And then I went in between there and just darkened up the lights here and there. But just broken lines you want, you don't want continuous lines, it's just like broken lines. Uh, but what that does, it makes it even more vibrant then, because you've got the contrast between the two. Now here I'm using a dark green rather than black uh, just to create that subtlety in between that bluey green colour. Uh, so you have to change it up, you have to be aware of the subtle changes. It's not all black in between, it's very sort of dark shadows of that colour. If you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me because this would help the channel to grow. Right so I'll pop down a bit of colour which is very similar to it underneath. So that's what I always try and do is put a bit of pigment down there. It's just something to work on. It gives it a little bit of texture underneath what you're doing. And then just draw it in the white and the dark in between with using brown to start with. While I'm doing this I'm constantly aware of the explosion power of it and also the direction of all these lines and they're all sort of flowing together as one. So you just sort of got to be aware of the whole thing and try and get that balance. Now I'm just adding different colours, yellows, greens and all sorts of things just to try it out and you've just got to sort of experiment really and see what works. 
and play with different pencils you've got in your kit until you find that solution that's the only way I can explain really it's a case of just not having a fixed idea what to do but always be open to change and experiment It's a really interesting study this because it's it's getting that subtlety but that get that chroma as well so it's really handy to do even if you specialize in portraiture doing things like this really helps and improves your portraiture because you learn to to find ways of getting that sort of glow and it's surprising what you uh, the insights you get to try and it's just a case of persevering keep trying and um, it will come eventually you just got to keep pushing your boundaries that little bit further each time just slowing down this to real time so you can see how i'm getting that subtleties in here and basically it's putting broken lines in there um, don't just do one continuous lines because it's this is little bits of subtleties and shadows and glimmers and uh, with these peacock feathers this sort of shimmer so it's like little bits of colour here and there and it's quite interesting to actually do now this area is quite dark so I'm using the brown but I'm mixing colours with that brown black and red and all sorts of things but you have to be aware of what part of this painting is the darkest part and squint your eyes uh, because it's so easy to try and make this as dark as everything else you think oh that's black but it's not black it's a tone because I work on sort of um, nine values four lights four darks and a mid tone so you have to be aware of whereabouts it is in the scale so it, it might look the same when you when you when you look at it you think well that's just black but it's not when you squint your eyes you can sense and feel that it is slightly different and to create that subtlety that's what gives that reality to it and it makes it more believable now I'm getting conscious now of the time and how long this video is so I'm just going to just to speed through this now same procedures what you've already seen so there's no good keep going over it just putting that white down the brown and then once you've got that it's like an underdrawing then you can glaze over them with these subtle colours um, creating that background now with greys and blues like sky just behind that um, it's just a case of just getting that underdrawing getting everything drawn up first and then just glaze over with these colours and put it in a nutshell and you've got to make sure that you get them darks the correct darkness and not too dark and not too pale so it's just getting that right balance but squint in your eyes to see the values and then open the eyes to see the colour now here I'm just putting those final details everywhere so I'm just looking in a mirror just make sure that everything feels right and I'm just checking the colour balance so I'm putting more highlights here and there and just getting a general feel of that explosion of colour Thank you so much for watching the video right till the end. I really appreciate it. It's been a really interesting study. Thanks for the suggestion. I've been really good to do. And getting all those vibrant colours as well have been quite interesting. If you're interested in seeing more work, please check out this link here. Bye for now. Take care.